Ninjan Uncon. Why are you correct? I'm so sorry for coming here late. I had parental duties that I was not aware of until I woke up in the morning. And then I got a reminder that the child must go to see the doctor because there was his date to go to the doctor. Anyway, I'm here and I was told that I have five minutes to talk to you guys about land. And as, as a feminist, shame. I'm going to talk about the status of women and land and what land ownership should be for women and basically centering women we conversation year land. Yeah? Um, women own less than 20% of the land in the world. And according to the United Nations, that's 10%. So it's not even 20%, it's 10% according to the United Nations. And that's because of many factors, right? There's patrilineal inheritance customs that are practiced, especially in Africa. Uh, we know our traditional systems always prioritize men. And I'm a title did Ganing Abanekameli one, which is the man's uh, name. Even when it's the woman's name, it's the man's uh, surname if they are married. So women automatically become second claimants or getting sake second owners of the land, uh, despite the fact that 70% of farming is done by women, and that 400 million women or plus women produce majority of the world's food supply. So we can't talk about e-land, the economy and everything else without noting that everything is gendered because it is. And I'm just here to, to remind us that we must not digress from that conversation. If 10% of our women own land currently, even though the state becomes the custodian of the land, what does it mean for access, particularly to women? Ne? And also, what does it mean in terms of deciding what the proceeds do of the land? Who has the deciding voice or the deciding vote on what happens on you know, the land that should belong to all of us? Ne? Um, In many parts of the country, traditionally, women are only recognized as landowners due to their relationship with men and male relatives. It happens to the land, but through our relationship to men. So if I'm married to a man, or a, likely there's a female chief who then speaks on my behalf as a widow, to take over the land and decide what happens to the person, how the land goes about. But that's a very tiny chance and we can't cling on to that little hope. There has to be means to ensure that women are equal partakers and stakeholders of the conversation of land and land ownership and land, uh, basically the whole entire conversation of land. Why should women be prioritized with land ownership or as land leases? if that is even an English word, but if it's not, we'll make it an English word today. Uh, women are the labor force, ne? By, major by virtue of being the majority in the country. And women spend 90% of their income on their household, as compared to their male counterparts who spend 30% of their income on their household, immediate families. So prioritizing women in leasing out land is prioritizing the community and families and households. This is why we should position, make sure that we position women in a way that benefits them. Uh, as contrary to what has been happening in majority of the countries that have had custodian of the land uh, being owned, or custodianship of the land being to the state, or coexistence of private ownership, and also state ownership. And it's also ensuring parental justice for women who, in our country, of six households, in 10 households, women run those households. So also giving women land and leasing land to women is ensuring parental justice. Ne? Five, five minutes. Okay. 
Esther Mwangi, who's a land scholar in Harvard, asserts that privatization, Abanti who are still, you know, who don't know if they should go for privatization or the land having been the custodian or the state being the custodian of the land. We Esther Mwangi, we are Shoguti, privatization strips women of excess. Mainly men get their names on documents because their household uh, is successors and generally the owners of land. Now, so now how do we ensure equal land redistribution for men and women? Firstly, there must be separation of formal ownership of land to the ability to use it. Now, this bearing a uh, Thus, bearing male leases from full control over land use and proceeds allocation. So even if land is allocated to, let's say, my husband's family, ne? if I'm part of that family, I should be part of the conversation, part of the stakeholders to decide what happens to the proceeds of the land. And it should not just be left to the male or the household in the male. Because it happens automatically that men become the heads because of our social beliefs, our socialization, religion, and culture. So there should be systems put in place to ensure that women also are stakeholders in the conversation of what happens to the land uh, proceeds. And secondly, we should put both names of men and women families on lease certificates, whether are married or not. Ne? Because there's cohabitation, there's traditional marriages, and all of that. But Guma Lee certificates, we should ensure that there's both the woman's name and the man's name. Ne? This is for security purposes. And also, inheritance and succession laws must be brought into harmony with the Constitution once it's amended. So, it shouldn't be common sense that the male child is a successor of what happens to the land post, you know, the death of the parents or whatever. But the constitution must be in harmony with the fact that we are saying it should be equal for both girls and boys to be equal successors and heirs of the land and what happens to the land proceeds. And land dispute resolution systems should also bear in mind gender parity. Né? So, Ganingi, these systems have majority of men who decide what land dispute or resolutions are. These systems should also be looked into so that women are also equal partakers of land disputes. Neoguti, the resolution should, just not, should not just remain with men. And this is both in Western courts and traditional courts. I mean, in South Africa, 60% of prosecutors are white men. So what does that mean for black women? What does that mean for rural gr or girls living in rural areas in terms of the land? So basically we are saying that the implementation and the law, or rather the existence of the law, does not necessarily mean that the implementation will be there. And we as a country, we know that more than anything, Uguti, we have the best constitution. And yet the lives of many people are still marginalized. We are still downtrodden. Women are still being abused and all of that. So we should find a way to ensure that a task force that takes care or that runs the land program, land conversation, and the lease and all of that also bears in mind gender parity in terms of representation and implementation to ensure that women are also equal partakers and stakeholders in the conversation of land ownership. Thank you so much.